Okay, look, I hope you've had a chance to actually have a look at this circuit. Of course, it's got my uh, independent source here of 10 volts, and it's got this dependent source sitting over here, and it's a current dependent source. So the value of this guy here, it's a voltage source, it's dependent upon that value of Ix. Now, in order to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit of this, as far as terminals A and B are concerned, we have to what? We have to find the short circuit current and then we actually have to find the open circuit voltage. So what we're going to do first is find that short circuit current, okay? So that means we're putting a short basically between our terminals A and B, and we're going to calculate that current I short circuit, all right? So uh, how do we do this? Well, look, one way to do this, of course, is perhaps to define two currents, I1, I2, as mesh currents. So the I1 mesh, okay, going around, let's have a look. We've got what going up? We've got 10, we've got a minus, and this of course is I1 times 3K. We're dropping here, are we not? So that's a minus, isn't it? And that's of course five times 10 to the three times IX. And of course we're dropping here again, so that's a minus I1 lead current, that's an I1 minus I2, and that's times 6K, and all of that is equal to zero. Okay, well, a couple of things to note here, perhaps. Um, Ix, what is Ix? Well, Ix is the same as I1, isn't it? So we can say note, Ix is really equal to I1. So really, I could put this information into here, couldn't I? So if we do that, we'll take these terms to the other side. We can say we've got 10 is really equal to what? Well, that's I13K, isn't it? So that's an I13K. All right, taking this other guy to the other side over here. That's, that's a plus, isn't it? 5 times 10 to the 3. Ix is the same as I1, so that is I1 sitting here. Taking this guy to the other side as well, what do we have? We have a plus, don't we? And that is, of course, six, well, I'll do it in two steps here. So that's I1 minus I2, close bracket, times 6K. All right, so we're going to collect our terms together now. So what do we have? We have 10 is equal to I1. How many I1s do we have? We have a 3K sitting here. Uh, we have basically a 5K sitting over here. And then we have a 6K uh, sitting right here. So let's add all those together. That gives us, what, 14K I1s. And then what are we left with? We're left with a minus I2 times 6K. All right? So that's our first equation in terms of I1 and I2. All right, so now we can have a look at what the I2 mesh. So let's, let's just go ahead and do that. I2 mesh. We'll write that equation down. So start here. We can say we've got what? We've got a minus I2. Well, let me put a bracket here. That's I2 minus what? I1. I2 is the lead times what? 6K. We're going up in voltage. So we could say we've got a plus. That's a 5 times 10 to the 3 times Ix, isn't it? But Ix is the same as I1. So let's put that guy in like so. And then we've got what over here? We've got a minus, have we not? That's an I2 times 1K. We're back to the beginning. And so all of that is equal to uh, zero, okay? And so that's our I2 mesh current. So collecting our terms together, we can say that we've got an I1 times 11K is equal to an I2 times what, 7K, all right? And now all we need to do is really substitute that into the first equation up here, and basically we'll be able to solve uh, for I2, which is our goal, really, to solve for I2. So I1 then is equal to I2, that's 7K, divided by 11K. 
And if we care to work that out, that is equal to 0 0.6366, better rounding, times I2, okay? So what we've got to do now is we've really got to put this guy into our first equation. So we're going to put that up into there. And that allows us now to solve for I2. So here we go. So we can say we've got what? 10 is equal to what about I1, which is 0 0.636 I2 multiplied by what? 14K. And then we've got a minus I2 times 6K. All right. So we need to just simply collect our terms really together. And I think we can say that we've got 10 is equal to, you can check this for me as well, but this is 2.9K times I2. And so therefore, I2 is equal to 3.45 milliamps. Okay, And this I2, of course, is really equal to the short circuit current. Okay. So the open circuit voltage. Now, look, that's the I of X. Um, now, I of X is flowing through our circuit like this. Remember, this is an open here. So if this is I of X here, then of course we've got I of X flowing through uh, the 6K as well. All right, so what we could do simplistically here is just to take a loop, a simple loop, and we'll just sum our voltages around that loop. So we can say what we've got. Going up, we've got a 10, haven't we? And then we can say I've got a minus, really it's an IX, isn't it? That's IX times what, 3K. Then I've got this voltage source here, which is what, a minus 5 times 10 to the 3 times that I of X. And then I've also got a minus uh, IX times the 6K. And all of that is equal to zero. So taking this to the other side, we can say that 10 is really equal to IX, and we've got what a 3K plus this guy, which is a 5K, and this guy is what a 6K, close my bracket. And so really what I can say is that um, 10 divided by this guy here, which is um, basically 14K, isn't it, is equal to IX, and so that really is equal to 0 0.714 uh, milliamps, okay? So that's the current that's flowing in this open-circuited condition as far as A and B are concerned. Now, we're interested in this voltage right here. There's no voltage drop across that resistor because there's no current going through it, so that voltage is the same as that voltage. That voltage is simply, what, this voltage source, plus this voltage across the 6K resistor. So let's have a look at that. And that would be our open circuit voltage. So, which of course is really V Thevenin. So V Thevenin is really equal to then this voltage, which is five times 10 to the three, multiplied by the I of X value, which is what? Seven, or rather 0 0.714 uh, milliamps, okay? So that's that guy, uh, plus the current, again, Ix, right, times 6K. So that's, again, this current, 0 0.714 milliamps multiplied by 6K, and that will be my Thevenin voltage. So if I kind of work this out, that Thevenin voltage comes out to be 7. 857. And of course, there's a bit of rounding going on there as well. So I now have the short circuit current and the Thevenin voltage, and I can really now calculate, what can I calculate? I can actually calculate the Thevenin resistance. So my Thevenin resistance then is simply equal to the Thevenin voltage, which is 7.857 and that's going to be divided by my short circuit current, which was 3.45 milliamps, 
And if I work that guy out, it comes to be 2.28K Thevenin resistance. All right, this was the original circuit, not showing the load, of course, and this is the Thevenin equivalent circuit over here. Now, just a couple of things to note. Um, if I had used that technique that we used at the beginning of the previous module, um, whereby we said that we could zero all our sources as we look in at terminals A and B to calculate that Thevenin resistance, that would have meant that we would have zeroed this guy, we would have zeroed this guy here. Now I said you can't do that. You can't calculate the Thevenin resistance that way. If we had done that, we'd get a different answer to this. In fact, what we would have is we'd have the 3K in parallel with the 6K, which as we know from before is what? 2K plus 1K, and we would have calculated that Thevenin resistance to be 3K instead of the 2.28K. So please note that when you've got dependent sources in your circuit that you're wishing to Thevenize, and also you have independent sources, then you have to use that technique of basically finding the Thevenin voltage and finding the short circuit current to actually find the Thevenin resistance. That is the Thevenin resistance is the Thevenin voltage divided by that short circuit current. That's a very important point to note. Well, I hope you got on quite well with this problem and I'll see you next time.